This is gonna take Cracker Jack timing, Wang. Total concentration. You ready, Jack? I was born ready. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes. And we've been covering all the uh, the breaking news about DC leaving Diamond Comics after their 25-year uh, partnership. Do you have more of a little bit of a different angle about some maybe some of the past issues between Diamond and DC and how it really, um, this probably wasn't as out of the blue as retailers and customers really are taking it. And here to talk with me about that is my good friend, Perch. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. You know, I'm glad that you were able to make it. We're a little bit later on the record time than normal, but uh, you're <laughs> still up and at them and, and researching all the, the comic book industry ins and outs, right? Absolutely. It's, uh, there's a lot of news right now, so a lot of things to look at. So recently, uh, if people don't know who this is, Diane Nelson, she was the president of DC Comics when they were a part of Warner Brothers. Once at and acquired uh, Time Warner, she kind of uh, was replaced by Pam Lifford, you know, an at and person. So she had uh, a lot of knowledge of, of uh, DC's ins and outs as far as the business goes. A, a few years ago, she actually went on to um, – Facebook groups recently and was kind of clarifying some of the information that she knew. And it turns out uh, these issues between DC and Diamond uh, certainly are not new. And one of the big things that she has highlighted is that DC has gone to Diamond in the past several times and said, listen, the industry is on an upswing right now. You have some money. You need to invest that into infrastructure monetization as far as your uh, equipment, your your." Ordering systems outdated. This is outdated. You probably need to come into the you know the twenty first century, and there was a lot of pushback on that. Yeah, I, I think keep in mind in all this that Diane Nelson, uh, the time she spent at DC, there were years during her run where DC had surpassed Marvel. I mean, during some of the the New Fifty Two years and and certainly part of Rebirth, there was times when the industry itself was definitely on an upswing. So. You look at her comments, and it's it's very quick to dismiss it of of saying, well, you know, maybe the comic industry is in a downswing, so maybe her comments are more about that than they are about Diamond. But no, actually, some of the time, much of the time, she was in that position. The comic industry was making more money than it had before, and we were seeing quite a lot of of really good traction. So her comments about going to Diamond and saying, look, we we have concerns about your financial stability. This is concerns about their financial stability during an uptime for the industry, during a time when when comics were making more money. That's that's a pretty startling statement, and it's it certainly definitely mirrors what others have said in different places. I think Diane Nelson being one of the the most senior names now we've seen come out to say, look, there have been problems with Diamond for quite some time. You would think when one of your premier partners, obviously Marvel would be the biggest name. They are the industry leader, but DC isn't too far behind them and certainly has uh, surpassed sales of Marvel in the past, that a, a company like uh, Diamond would heed that warning or or those, or those heed those suggestions and be like, yes, it is time to modernize. But they got a lot of pushback with saying, basically, we don't need to do that. And that is really one of the follies and one of the reasons a monopoly doesn't work because without the competition, they literally had no incentive to do better uh, for their retail partners, for the consumers, and for their publishing partners, and uh, it seems to have doomed them in the end. Absolutely. I mean, you know, look at it. I think it's interesting to see a company like Diamond, who is a monopoly, and and basically throw that power away. They they had the, the this position where they definitely had the control in the industry. They had the ability to kind of dictate terms to everyone, and they were incredibly complacent with their position in the industry. They they. I mean, it was theirs to lose. A lot of these companies, there's just not enough money in comics for there to be a heated uh, you know, competition. So in a lot of cases, all Diamond needed to do was basically keep up with their partners, uh, make sure stuff is going out, and not, not, not create reasons for people to want to take pains to leave. I mean, what a lot of people don't you know, need to realize here is it's, it's painful to create these other options. The fact that their service was, was so bad that these warnings weren't taken is is startling i mean they they made people invest spend money in order to come up with different options that's 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 it's amazing if you think about it yeah it kind of speaks to the hubris of the company and, and even the uh the owner steve jeppy one of the things that we can also look at is the feedback from former employees of of uh of diamond comics as far as their feelings about working in that environment and it almost mirrors what diane nelson says 
Uh, while there are, are some positive feedbacks, almost all the negative feedbacks have a, a few certain things that are in common, and a lot of them have to do with infrastructure. There's no upward mobility because nobody that's been there for a while, nobody senior will, will step aside, and there's no growth or innovation in the company. Yeah, that's right. I mean, whenever you look at these sites like a, like an Indeed or a Glassdoor, of course, there's going to be former employees that are disgruntled, and that's going to that's going to feed into the reviews. But when you have a, a good volume, in this case, we've got dozens and dozens of reviews, and you know everybody has different grievances, but one very common thread, and that's that the company is is very archaic. You know, they mention things like software that hasn't been updated in 30 years, or you know, the lack of an IT department, or you know, just you know, big parts of their system crashing kind of out of nowhere. You see that from review to review, even positive reviews, even employees who are happy, who still work there are making comments about, you know, in their, in the cons that there is just no, you know, no solid software, no solid infrastructure. And these are the same kind of things that Diane Nelson was saying, that they weren't investing in their own business, that they, they had uh, systems from 25 years ago uh, that had just never been updated. And and so to see her comments mirroring what we're hearing from employees within the company, I mean, you, there, there's a correlation there. There's definitely some truth to it. I know a lot of people are saying, well, you know, we've never seen anything in like this in the industry before when the pandemic shutdown happened. And that's certainly true. We've never had a full shutdown. But you can also say that the industry wasn't prepared for this, or at least Diamond wasn't, and maybe it didn't need to happen. I know that um, the, when we one of the the original fix actions was going to be you know this Comic Hub web, website that's developed by like a a, a single comic book retailer, uh, I believe he's down in New Zealand, mm -hmm. and that's a good idea. And I think that that probably would have worked, and probably um, DC wouldn't have needed to leave Diamond if Diamond themselves have been invested in their own company and probably went to DC and went to Marvel and said, this is our plan to build an online infrastructure. Yeah, yeah I think, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, the, the funny part about all this is it, it strikes me that the comments that both Diane Nelson made and then also a little bit of what we'd heard from DC, it, it's less that you know they, they didn't have the right solution. It's that they didn't have a plan. And in a lot of cases, if Diamond had simply gone to, to DC or gone to some of these other organizations and said, look, um, we don't know the exact right answer for a POS system or, or how to track or ways to modernize. We don't know the exact answer how to modernize, but we'll set up a consortium of a bunch of different retailers. We'd like to work with you as publishers. We'd like to get your ideas. You guys have big tech departments. What should we do? Show a little bit of humility and, and actually show some drive to fix the problem, even if they didn't have the answers. I think would have gone a long way, but instead the message that got sent to these publishers are, you know, we're we're uh, we're content to just let the business be exactly as it is, not protect it, not evolve it, and if you are simultaneously starting to miss payments and may have some financial stability, I mean, if you're a publisher and this is your only output, you have to start looking for other options, and that's what DC did. Yeah, just thinking about the single point of failure that Diamond became, and like you said, all of a sudden you can't ship comics. And even the comics that you had shipped and that were purchased by comic retailers, you're not receiving payment on them. Uh, you can see why someone from AT&T or people probably internally at DC, and I would be shocked if people internally at Marvel and Disney and combined and said, you know, this is unacceptable. We put out a product. they It's been sold. We're waiting on our payment and uh, that they weren't financially solvent enough uh, or didn't have enough capital to withstand this and just say, you know what? We're, we're going to revise our payment uh, plans. You're going to be receiving less money. Oh, and we're not going to ship out anything else, so you won't be receiving any money in the meantime. Yeah. It's a terrible position to be in. No, and no, nobody who works in a DC or a Marvel, I mean, what's interesting is it's, it still is interesting that Marvel has not made more noise around this situation. It, it does live, lend credence to people who say that Marvel just doesn't, or Disney just doesn't care and is completely ignoring the system because if you're a large company, um, and you, you have a business line that's dependent on a single point of failure and that single point of failure is not paying you and is missing payments and you you know you do some investigation you see comments like the CEO is is absent and nobody sees him and you know I, I mean th these kinds of, of things would would terrify any big corporation and they would immediately start to invoke other other solutions so um, none of this should be surprising I think that the surprising part to me, is how the comic industry itself has reacted with uh, shock at this move. I, I mean, you, you could see this move coming a mile away. 
Well, the other surprising part of the reaction is the derision, the the absolute uh, outrage that some retailers have had. Uh, there have been other YouTubers that have speculated that it's because it, this isn't a big secret. Everyone knows that that Diamond has lent money in the past to retailers that were having a hard time. Chuck Rosansky said that he had owed a, you know over a million dollars to Diamond in the past. You know, in his most recent Mile High uh, newsletter, and that that is um, garnered a sense of fealty or over sense of uh, of reliance or or um, mm -hmm. what's the word? No, I mean it, it. It 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 makes a commitment. It makes an attachment. It makes a dependency, um, certainly on these companies. And I'm sure there is some of that. So I think some of the speculation by by some of the other YouTubers are correct. I think there is a a sense of when you know somebody's loaned you money in the past, it it makes you feel indebted to them. I'm sure that's true. And I also think it works the other way. I think uh, Diamond owes money to a lot of these people in different forms. And if Diamond owes you money then you know you're you're going to want to protect your own investment you're you're hoping to get your money back so if suddenly the number 2 publisher pulls out that makes the likelihood that you're going to get made whole lower and so of course you're going to be pissed and you're probably going to be pissed at DC because in your mind DC took money out of your pocket they're you know you're you're angry at the lender for for you know owing you money but you're also angry at people who are making it less likely that you're going to get paid so I, I mean I'm sure there's some of that going on and I I, I don't think it's like any kind of backroom mafia deal of you know, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. It's more a sense of, uh, look, this is the this has been your business partner, and now suddenly your business partner is getting exposed as being on the rocks, and uh, you know you'd like your money back. You also don't want to be you know look like the idiot who's continued to support that that maybe flaky partner. So we have gotten a little bit of a, a peek behind the curtain as far as what DC and uh, Diamond think about how this split happened. And what is interesting is that DC and Diamond were renegotiating their contract when supposedly DC abruptly uh, removed themselves from the negotiations and said they weren't going to be working with Diamond. But we do know before that, Diamond had sent a, a set of questions to DC about how they were going to continue this partnership. But it turns out it wasn't so much about their agreement and how they were going to work together in the future. Those questions really were about Lunar and UCS and what competition was going to remain in the industry moving forward. And I'm sure that infuriated DC that they weren't, that Diamond weren't worried or concerned about their own involvement in the relationship, but were only concerned about new competition being brought into the, into the industry. Yeah. I mean, it, it strikes me as, as somebody who's reading the room really badly. I mean, you're Diamond and you've got egg on your face because you, you weren't able to ship comics. You shut down, you owe people money. I mean, I think that's the part that that really strikes me is they they owed people money. They were on they were basically moved to insolvency or something that looked like it within ten days, where they can no longer pay their bills and they had to furlough people. Um, that was really rapid. It, it shows that there was not a lot of cash in that bank, and and so to be in that position and then suddenly you know you've got a big distributor there who you'd like to in theory keep. But they're now, you know, you know, they have created other competitive options to you. They've opened the door after 25 years to other options for distribution. So rather than go in there humble and say, look, yeah, we clearly got caught, you know, with our pants down, uh, but we're going to make it right. And we want to make sure that we're, we're doing the right thing to build this business up. Instead, it sounds like they went in almost like with a list of demands, like they're, they're, they're completely misreading their, their place in the industry at this point. They're, they're, missing the fact that they're in a moment of weakness and said kind of went in and puffed up their chest and said, you know, who are these other guys? Why are they in the room with us? And again, if, if you're DC, that's going to be the straw that breaks a camel's back, especially seeing what Diane Nelson said of, of this being many, many years in the making. Um, you know, I, 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 I have no surprise that DC looks at it and go, look, I think the Lunar and, and uh, uh, in Midtown and these other options are working for us. Forget it. You know, we're just going to do this and, and we're going to stop playing this game. All right. So another thing that Diane Nelson did say in these in these Facebook groups uh, that I think was enlightening, and I 100% agree with her. I think she was right on the money. Is that DC's communication with retailers has been abysmal, and even DC's re, uh, probably communication with Diamond, they have got to open the curtain a little bit more, be more transparent with what they're thinking. This was an enormous change for the industry. This changed the status quo. This affected basically every single retailer in the world that sells comic books they needed to be more forthright 
They need to be more open with what they were doing, why they were doing it, and give more of a timely service announcement to their partners. Yeah, I mean, I, absolutely. I think um, a lot of people are looking at some black and white of you're either with them or against them. And the reality is there's there's mistakes that have been made. I think uh, DC, and this is not an excuse for DC, they're clearly uh, almost making it up as they go along. They're they're scrambling, I think, to set these things up. And, you know, and, and so you give them some credit in this situation, which was unprecedented, a lot of things changing all at once. Um, it, it, you know, it was a lot to do in a very short amount of time. And time was, you know, time was not their friend here. So they had to make quick moves and that's going to lead to bad communication. That said, um, there, there's definitely, they definitely could have done a better job um, or even a good job. I think that, I think she's right. The job that was done was very, very poor. And I think it would have, um, I don't know that, we would have seen less complaining from the retailers. I think they were going to probably do it the way I think it would have played out very similar, but you know, 85%, maybe 90% of the retailers we haven't heard from. These are the silent people who do not give interviews to bleeding cool or any of the rest. They're just trying to run their business. And those people you do see picked up on Facebook groups. You do see other places, but, but in many cases, they're just trying to mind their store and they're frustrated. Um, they want to support this move. They want to have, you know, many of them have problems with diamonds. So they're interested in, in you know seeing if things can be better uh but the communication was bad and i think you've had some other retailers on your channel that have been skeptical of this move but when they actually got some comics it, it turned out to not be so bad and and that's so that's a good nice surprise but the communication how we got here uh, does have to improve and this is something if, if you're dc you need to really take stock of of what worked and what didn't and the, the messaging the communication the signups all that kind of stuff was was very poor so you did mention that <clears throat> there are a vast majority of the retailers we haven't heard from, but the retailers we have heard from have been very vehemently against this decision. You know, it's your, your Brian Hibbs, your Joe Fields, Chuck Rosanskis, your big names that they can get into Bleeding Cool, Newsarama, ICV2. They can do these interviews and stuff like this. A lot of them have a, a presence with Comics Pro. Do you think, you know, th was this orchestrated by Steve themselves like behind closed doors or do you think this is a, a genuine honest reaction you know i think a little of both i think that um in, in many cases i think these names have um been the bigger names in the industry for a long time uh, on the retailer level and i think like you know they're they're maybe a little smarter in some cases in diamond and that they can smell that change is coming they they can smell that maybe they're not going to be the top dogs that they once were. And I think there's a certain amount of clinging to that position. So I think that's definitely some of it. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Steve Jeppy certainly circled the wagons a little bit with people who, you know, are loyal to him or people who have been on the fence and say, look, I've, I've helped you in the past. You helped me, or, you know, we got to stick in this together. I'm sure I'm positive. There's been some males because you know, we've seen, <laughs> well, I don't know what's been made public, but I know some have gone out of, we have to stick together here. Uh, with the enemy being, you know, being DC and what they've done. I, the comparisons of DC and Heroes World is being invoked by people all over the place as a way to kind of scare off this. I, I think that I think that we're in the midst of seeing a transformation for the industry, and that's going to benefit some and not benefit others. I think it's going to hurt all the people who are complacent about their business. And, and so, you know, unfortunately, that's the way business works. So, Perch, uh, I really appreciate the conversation today, you know, talking about uh, the, the statements from Diane Nelson on Facebook, also talking a little bit about the feedback that we've had over the time with DC, I'm sorry, with Diamond as far as their monetization or lack thereof uh, and, and all these things. Is there anything else that, that we missed or that you really wanted to highlight again before we wrap this up? No, I, I just, I think that um, certainly people are speculating. Um, I, I appreciate the coverage you've given. It's, it's, it's news. It's not, uh, not as much, you know, we're, we're outlining when it's speculation and when it's not. I think we have to see how this all plays out. But but again, I, I none of these moves should be seen as alarming or frightening. You could you could read them coming a mile away. And in, in Diane's case, I mean, she was outlining how she saw it. So, uh, you know, we, we shouldn't let this news catapult us into other rumors again, like DC's getting sold or any of the other kind of conspiracy theories that, that kind of play along. We just need to see where this goes. Um, and, and I'm excited, honestly, as I'm excited for this business to see some of this change happen. It won't all be pretty, but I'm, I'm interested to see where it goes. I'm with you, brother. I really appreciate the time. Yeah, anytime. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. 
And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.